a gain of four. Richard losing again almost every bit of the play clock. And that one incomplete thrown behind Willie Tillman, who had the coverage from David Mackler. Not happy with himself. It might have gone a long way. This time, Alford coming wide right at the bottom of your picture. Hasn't looked his way yet. Lincoln again suddenly short. Here's Watson, a fine pass catcher out of the backfield, and he is dragged down by Jason Collins, what would appear to be a yard or two shy of the first down. Jason Collins is a good open field here. People won't understand this. When we did the cut-in this morning, we said that this was McCreary's first year as a starter, and he has hit a rough spot. He is a little bit rattled. He, he did not know the snap count on that last play, and that's been typical of his play the last couple of weeks. Motion from Jura Vicious. And not much yardage available off the left tackle that time on this defensive unit. Completely reshuffled secondary. Linebackers all in their first year at those respective positions. Spin move by Enos. Some of the younger players. Enos as he reached midfield. That means I wasn't tough enough. McQuarrie steps up, finds Shoffy Fields. The speedster play. You saw Watson come out. Offer bottom of your screen with trips left. And juggled, but the catch is made by the tight end John Blackman. His ninth reception of the year to the 37-yard line. The change will move again for Purdue. This is not an offense that features the tight end. But ben, Big John Blackman is glad he came back out for football. He didn't even play a year ago. Third and five. With again, Purdue trips left and Alfred, their leading receiver, coming wide right. Picking over the middle, the third catch on the drive by Blackman. Dude. Ways. Short tosses, runs around either edge, runs right up the middle. It's all working right now for Purdue. This is Isaac Jones with a reach the 20-yard line of the Nittany Lions as we begin quarter number two from ross -Aid Stadium with a second and seven for the Boilers. Watson running through two tackles and is at the 10, right where he was before the holding penalty. Looking the call at the line. Watson edged up a little closer. All kinds of time, and in the middle of the end zone, wide open, Isaac Jones. Third score of the year. For Isaac Jones. Ohio State. Richard Willock in motion. And it's back again. And he goes down. He will. Tavian Bank scores. 46 yards. And Iowa is on the board first. from Jura Vicious, offset eye. Enos again. Nice room created for Curtis Enos that takes too many whiffs, especially last week. Now McCleary having to improvise a little bit. And he is belted out of bounds by Willie Fell. And first man in motion. Now Shoffy Fields. And Enos getting away from the hit in the backfield breaks another couple of tackles. Boy, one of the best of the year from Curtis Enos, all the way to the 44, 11 yards. Fabian Banks for the season, they are dead last in the Big Ten in that all-important category. And Purdue, on the other hand, at plus 11. The thing that makes it so difficult to defend the run is that they spread you all over the field. You've got to go out and cover these people that are outside. 
second. First time he tried to get it to Alford, he almost brought that one in one-handed. The second quarter, has he not been a factor yet? Well, he didn't make the script, Dave. On those first 15, Watson. Again, the two types. The give to Watson. Don't think so. First man there to plug the gap, Maurice Daniels, 52. And again, Mac Morrison was right there. The backup linebackers for Penn State, today anyway, pretty much as effective as uh, the people they play behind. Versions this year, 33%, all of two today are the Wildcats. Autry behind Hughes, blitz coming. Can't handle it. It's incomplete. Penn State last week, Bill, 0 for 12 against the Michigan defense on third down. They had only nine first downs. They get Enos out wide left. Again, McQuarrie having to scramble. Cleary has this one. And a first down to the Purdue 47. They lead 20 to nothing against Iowa State. At the point, it's now 21 nothing. Florida State's Thad Busby is pushing 250 yards passing. Just threw another one. Seminole's up 34 now. Well, we're much more competitive here. 6 nothing. Nine and a half minutes to go first half. Fake to Enos. McQuarrie gunning it for Shoffy Fields. On target at the 25. 18-yard completion. Almost 20 yards per touch. He comes in motion. Good to Enos. Right side room through a tackle, finally dragged down from behind by Lee Johnson. By the fact that Enos never quit, he only back to get 100 against them. That was now, no doubt a good friend. Enos coming right side. McQuarrie hanging it up for Fields in the end zone, the catch, and we're tied. Shelfie Fields, once again, great athletic ability. And it's just a matter of who can keep their footing and have the hand-eye coordination to come down with the ball. Fields, should he get on the same side as Fields? Venus. We'll bring up third and one. And Enos close to a 100-yard half. Great chance for Penn State to add to the lead just before the half. Enos loses at least one. Lead rush. Loss of two. McQuarrie much better protected. And a collision between Bell and Fields at the 10-yard line draws a flag. McQuarrie, 102 yards. Enos. Now over the 100-yard barrier. And mark him down to the 14. Back last week, Chris Everly with a concussion, Bob Stevenson with a concussion. McQuarrie for the pylon that time, an incomplete intended for Brian Brozeski. Very seldom. They're delivering in this drive. Here, though, the big play of the drive, the 11th play. And he just faked the reverse, still has it, and is in for the touchdown. Now Joe Tiller is known for the trickery. Penn State pulls, in, pulls one out of the hat uh, that they've worked on. I've never seen that play before, and I've never seen Curtis Enos carry the ball like a loaf of bread before, but he got it in the end zone. Toss sweep. Take the reverse. Penn State borrowed that one from um, one of the high school playbooks, but it works. Roma Stasi's hold for 40's kick. And a 14-6 lead for Penn State. With 48 seconds to go in the first half. Griffin with four wides. And incomplete intended for Winston. As the sun breaks through in West Lafayette. Dickon is 
He's missed five of his last six. This one deep for Winston. Double coverage. Winston with the catch at the 27. to 5'7", 155-pound Donald Winston, and Purdue will use its first timeout. Another serious tactical mistake by the Penn State defense. You don't allow, they're dropping eight here. They're in a deep zone. You don't allow anybody behind the free safety. Nobody is deeper than the safety. This is an underthrow. If this ball is thrown deep enough, Donald Winston scores because he is behind Sean Lee, the free safety number 24. And stick and motioning Winston. Go deep. Look for a second as if he had him, but he just ran out of room. And lost the yard. Hanging this one to the end zone and overthrown. No flag. Fans are screaming for it. It was intended for Willie Tillman with David Macklin providing the coverage and down. And Winston. Top of your picture wide right. Looking for the sideline. It is a catch for Alfred at the 26-yard line. And that is his first catch of this game with only 10 seconds to spare. And he has the leg. He's got the wind at his back, and he's good. So thanks to the 51-yard Dickin to Winston bomb with five seconds to spare, Purdue will apparently end the first half with the up note, cutting the uh, margin back to 14 to nine. Nittany line against number 20. Purdue locked up in a good one, 14 to 9 at the half as we send you to Mike Tarico. All right, Dave, so you could sense momentum really going toward the Nittany Lions, but Purdue gets that late field goal and it okay. first it's the offense. The touchdown pass to E.G. Green. And Melvin Pearsall, look at the tight end. Showing the speed of a receiver. 45 yards. That made it 21 to nothing. Now I'm going to show you some defense. Tony Bryant drops back, picks it off. Takes it in. 28 to nothing. Florida State, it continues to be one-sided. Now at halftime, a ball. Three and out. Four plays later, 7 nothing. Nebraska on the green run. Third and 18, Noah Brindice. Scott plays green. 41 yards to the four. It was first and goal. Took him three tries to not punch it in. Then on fourth and goal, Jamie Richardson the touchdown. 7-0 Gators. Now Doug Johnson comes in for Brindice. Late first quarter. He's going to go deep. Johnson. Back to Doug Johnson is intercepted by Arturo Freeman. And Noah Brindice continues to be the quarterback who's getting the better play. Florida just seconds ago on a punt return. Jock plays green. Breaks free for an 86-yard touchdown. Another puncher. Looking like another puncher. So Florida busts out into the lead against South Carolina. The offense has not been explosive. That touchdown breaks a tie game. Now 14-7 Florida. Remember, they play Florida State next week. And no flurries in Pittsburgh. First quarter. Orange up 6-0. Donovan McNabb topside to Jim Turner. 51 yards inside the five. On first and goal, the Orangemen give it to D. Brown, who punched one in from a yard out earlier. This time from three yards out to make it 12-0 before the half. A McNabb touchdown pass to Kasim Sinsano, the tight end. Syracuse leads 19-0. Syracuse can share the Big East title with Virginia Tech. But if Virginia Tech loses their final conference game, the Orangemen still very much in the alliance picture. There's also another deal where they could move up in the polls. It's far too complicated for this short four. Second half in a minute. Undersized. Make up for it with Hart. McQuarrie and the tight end Schioli has the catch still going. Red Schioli is inside the 20. Folks, that was a great play by the quarterback. Mike McQuarrie, again, had traffic flying around. He stepped up. He delivered the football exactly where he needed to. Schioli turned on that five-flat speed and went down the sideline. 37 yards, Rose running him down after Adrian Beasley made the mistake of trying to get him high. Adrian needed to just hang on. He got shrugged off. It reminds me a little bit of a 
great John Mackey, my roommate at Baltimore, except that Mack could outrun the safeties. The lucky ones fell off. Some shaky moments, but the numbers looking pretty good from the query. Enos, room left side this time. And Beasley that time did go. McQuery wide open as Fields. Room to make a few moves to get inside the five as Burroughs slings him out. And Philadelphia has him set up. First and goal, looking to add to a five point lead. Just under five to go in the third. Enos cutting it back and a touchdown for Curtis Enos, his second of the day. And I'll tell you right now, <laughs> nobody was going to keep Curtis out of the end zone. That's that's about a thousand pounds of man when you get to going that fast with those pads about six inches off the ground. Anthony Cleary on the lead block and a great lead block on the middle linebacker Willie Fells, number 40. And Curtis continues his big day. And this third down seven. Thanks. Close to the first down. Ten yards on 17 carries. Lincoln wants everybody out of the backfield. Good protection. Almost caught by Willie Kilman thrown just behind him. Let's check in with Mike Carrico. Well, Ohio State just taking care of business like everyone else has against Six Illinois. Now 35-0. Pepe Pearson, a 40-yard score. Number one, Florida State. Number three, Nebraska. Number four, Ohio State. Right now lead by a combined score of 150 to 7. Ouch. Indeed, ouch. And we may get some of that snow here. The Big Ten led by Michigan. 27 now. Watson has returned. For Alford, almost intercepted by Sean Lee. Carter, his best ever is 44. And this one's going to be short. We got to get it to him now. Ryder's going to throw it. Dwight makes the catch, and they do get him the football. And he's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Close to a first down, a 12-yard pickup. And maybe you all the credit here to Brian. Extra point. They go for two and miss. So Northwestern in the snow leads by one on the deuce. Purdue, Pete, and the Nittany Lions squaring off. 53 seconds, third quarter. Third and ten. Enos going out wide in motion. As Fells breaks up the middle, forces the early pass, but Enos is open. He got past Beasley, and he's still going, and he's going to score. Curtis Enos goes 67 yards. And Mike McQuarrie takes a huge step forward to redeem his past sins when he evades the rush of Willie Fells, number 40, who is once again clean up the middle on the Penn State pass protectors. McQuarrie shows great athletic ability here because he's got Leo Perez in his face and makes an outstanding throw in exactly the right place. We noted the mistake by Sean Lee, the free safety of Penn State, the same mistake by Adrian Beasley, the free safety for Purdue. Forney's extra point after the first touchdown catch this year by Curtis Edis. Plenty of touchdowns on the ground, including this afternoon. A couple of times before this, they had sent him in motion out wide, and this is the first time that they really take advantage of it, although it had been set up. 142 rushing, now two for 76 receiving. Three of the four Penn State touchdowns. What clock rolling down? Riders throw, got him in, it's Dwight. Inside the 25 and Tim Dwight with his first two catches of the football game on this drive as Iowa. Great protection, but he throws it right into the arms of Daniels. And now they say he didn't hang on. 
out on that one. So second and ten. Swing it for a head out, and he brings it in. What an amazing catch. The pass thrown right over the back of Chris Snyder, and Headhead hangs on and is inside the seven. This is a zone blitz. They're coming with seven. So Chris Snyder, a defensive end, pulls off to cover the back and is actually in pretty good position. He requires a perfect throw and a great catch, both of which occur. And I guess Eric got his hands warmed up, baby. Junior out of Westlake, Ohio. Probably the best catch of the day. The hands no longer a problem for him, it look like. So Purdue opening the fourth quarter with an impressive march to first and goal. To the end zone, caught. Touchdown, Gabe Cox. to go for two after Gabe Cox has his first touchdown catch of the season. They're going to get trips right and now had the only man left. Fires it and again caught by Jones this time. So they make up for the missed extra point, the only one that Shane Wright has missed all year. With the two-point connection, Dickin to Isaac Jones in his 28-17 at ross Age Stadium. Brought to you by Century by Buick. Discover a little luxury in this century. Wabash River. This is lucky predecessor of the Wabash Cannonball, 28-17 against Wisconsin in the kickoff classic. Curtis Enos. Touchdowns. Look out for Enos. Stays short this time and has the catch and has the first down for Penn State. To the 44, where he's tackled by Rose and Kennard. Enos, who again starts in motion wide right now. Stumbling a bit as he drops back. Can't get it off. Burroughs wouldn't let go. Eric Haddad on the carry on a third and one, and he's easily picked up the first down. Tackling guard, respectively. Got the block. 20. Best receiver in the Big Ten for 22 yards, a non- Dickin again into some coverage, but the catch by Cox. Good for seven. He had only seven catches all year before today. Deep in the end zone for Alfred, and the dive is out of bounds. Almost into a snow drift. 48 attempts, a career high. Sutherland, Alfred, Cox, all right, Jones is left. Winston's in motion. Two on the play clock, just in time to snap. Intercepted, Jason Collins has only Dickon to beat. And Dickon drives him out at the 39-yard line. A 52-yard return of the interception by Jason Collins. And how many... Good job by Brad Schioli. Curtis Enos for his touchdown and perhaps his career game. And i got to say, I'm impressed with Kareem McKenzie, the freshman offensive tackle. Remarkable work by a man in his first extended play. Fourth touchdown today for Edith from 30 yards out. Travis Forney makes it 35-17. Three rushing, one receiving touchdown. Dropped one earlier, it is two. This one he brings back all the way. As the quarterback goes, so goes the offense, quoting coach Joe Tiller for Purdue a little practice so he got his hands warmed up and this time 
He still tips it up in the air, but he managed to keep it in play. Then he comes down with it and takes it in the end zone. Down to Dave Ryan. 1984, their last winning season, their last bowl appearance, their last win over Notre Dame. And the win this year over Notre Dame is what really got Joe Tiller's ball run. Cavaliers, a delay of game call so they could get a better angle for the winning kick, and George Welsh's Cavaliers defeated Leon Burtonette's Oilers 27 to 24. I was there. were there. I was there. I was the color commentator on the radio along with Brad Nestler, my play-by-play -play guy. The broadcast debut. Joe Tiller was the defensive coordinator that day for Purdue as Jones is dragged down from behind by LeVar Arrington. Didn't get him out of bed. So on a fourth and nine, that run by Kenny Watson to end the game. Our Kelly Springfield players of the game in the 42-17 victory for Joe Paterno. Curtis Enos, 186 rushing, 83 receiving, four touchdowns for Penn State. Billy Dickin, 33 of 60, 348 yards, two scores and two picks for Purdue. Kelly Springfield, proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund on behalf of these athletes. Eight and one, five and one in the conference for Penn State. Now for Bill Curry and Dave Ryan, I'm Dave Barnett. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now stay tuned, the Residence in College Football Scoreboard Show is next. All their 27 points in the fourth quarter to take a one-point lead, but Quentin Spotwood hauls in the pass there in the final 30 seconds in the snow. They don't get the two-point conversion, but now in the final 30 seconds, they have a five-point lead. That they need to expect this one to be a war, that we want something that BYU has had for a number of years, and they're not going to give it to us. We're going to have to go fight hard for it. It's mid-November, and the WAC Mountain Division is still undecided. Brigham Young and New Mexico are two of the front runners and two of the most punishing hitters in the league. BYU found their offense last week against Tulsa. Kevin Federick threw for four touchdowns, and Brian McKenzie ran like a hurricane. The Lobos are howling thanks to Graham Lee, a player who can run and gun. It's the Wild WAC coming up on the Deuce. A snowstorm ripped through Albuquerque last night, leaving the field here at University Stadium, a frozen tundra. Ground crews arrived this morning and have done a marvelous job preparing this field for one of the biggest games in New Mexico's 99-year history. The sun is out, and a record crowd expected to watch Brigham Young, one of the longtime powers in the WAC take on New Mexico, a school on the verge of stepping into the national spotlight, those beautiful Sandia Mountains behind them. And hi, everyone. I'm Craig Bullerjack, along with Hall of Famer Kellen Winslow. Welcome to Albuquerque. You talk about Brigham Young and this series, Kellen. BYU has won 16 consecutive games, 24 of the last 25. It was September of 1980, the last time that BYU lost to New Mexico. And as a point of reference, Craig, to give you a few facts here, Jim McMahon was the quarterback, the longtime NFL star at BYU at the time. Jimmy Carter, remember him? He was the president. Graham Lee, the quarterback for New Mexico, only five years old, and ESPN was only 364 days young. Only a baby. Only, only a, a baby. baby. Yeah, Dennis Francione in his sixth season. The Lobos are 7-2. and two. He's done a fabulous job rebuilding this program, and he's rebuilt it, Kellen, with players like Graham Lee and Pascal Valls. In the last four ball games, Graham Lee has thrown for 10 touchdowns, and nine of those touchdowns have gone to Pascal Valls, number 81. So it's easy to see who his, his main target is. All right, Holly Rowe will join us on the sideline this afternoon. And Holly, surrounded by snow, how about a snowball? Hey, 
I've got one right here for you, Craig. You know, it's been just about that long since it snowed during football season, so ironically, they don't even have a cover for the field. So three to four inches of snow did fall directly on the field, but they got it off in time this morning. When the sun came out, it's dried the field pretty good. They even had a chance to mow it. But I did notice during warm-ups that the receivers were slipping and putting up some pretty big divots as they tried to get off the line, so it could be a consideration. Craig? All right, thanks a lot, Holly. Here comes Brigham Young, up and down season for the Cougars. A victory today keeps their postseason hopes all very, very much alive. And for New Mexico, victory also means postseason play. It would also send a message to the WAC, and that message would be the Lobos have arrived. A fabulous day in Albuquerque. Stay tuned, Mike Adamley will update you in all the events around college football. Utah Darnell at Arsenal, slant to Jerome Anderson. He reaches in for the score, 17-14 that game at halftime. But coming up next, it is BYU in New Mexico from Albuquerque. Right now, let's send you back to Albuquerque and join Craig Bowler Jack and Kellen Winslow. Guys? All right, thank you, Mike Adamley. Kevin Federick has run the gambit of emotion this year, lost and then won his starting job. Broken ankle against Rice, and now five weeks later is back. Maybe the fastest healer in the whack, but his leadership and his left arm are the two ingredients for success at Brigham Young. Leadership and Graham Lee is what makes the Lobos tick. His approach is simple. What's ever best for the team? His arm is lethal. So far, 17 touchdowns and seven more on the ground. For head coach Dennis Francione, the best thing about Graham Lee, he's only a junior. Yes, only a junior. New Mexico won the toss. They deferred, they want it to start the second half, and the emotions already running high here in Lobo Land. Dabney back to receive. Bloom has it teed up at the 35-yard line. Jared Kennedy also back to receive for Brigham Young. The Cougars come in. With a six and three record, four and two in conference play, the Lobos seven and two, four and two. Kennedy at the 15-20 breaks a tackle and is tackled ball down. Loose, ball ball loose. Loose. Lobos have it at the 22. What a way to start! Under Sinnoh. They line up in the eye formation, first and 10 from the 22. Numbers on the season, over 1,700 yards, pound seven from the 20-yard line of Brigham Young. Two wide outs, slot man near side. Lee on the sprint out option, Russell Run tucked it first down, out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Tackled by the weak side linebacker, Brad Martin. First and goal from the eight. Lee sprints near side. Again, tucks and run, has a lane, stumbles and falls inside the five yard line. One good blanket. Up the middle. Johnson stacked up and finally put down at the line of scrimmage. You could just peel the Y off the helmet of Brigham Young. It would take so much of the mystique away, and the players of New Mexico would think, hey, it's just another football game. Clock running. Ball from Ocean Man throws it. Got him. Touchdown. Number one, Omar Morgan on the coverage there, got beat for the easy touchdown. Play action by Graham Lee, sucked him in, they were looking for one. Chris Schell picked up, and Omar Morgan about three steps late on coverage. And a Rice loss, and they go to the championship game. BYU, two wins and a Rice loss, so this game is very important. And Frederick. 61% completion rate on his passes, over 1,500 yards, missed four games because of a fractured ankle that he suffered five weeks ago in a game that we called down at a very rainy, rainy game against Rice. 
it is nothing short of miraculous that this young man has returned to the field as quickly as he has and played as well as he did last week. Four touchdowns last week against Tulsa. Tulsa. There's a look at the dean of the head coaches of the WAC, Lavelle Edwards, in his 26th season. His Cougars down seven, 12-20 to play opening quarter. side a couple to the 23 let's check in with Mike well Craig and Kellen only in the WAC could Rice Stadium host the Rice team in Salt Lake City Rice with the football but they fumble it it is picked up by Charles Lawson or Charles Lawrence I should say he goes 67 yards for the score and Utah in a must-win situation against Rice leads by 10 guys all right thank you Mike you see 909 left to play in that game a lot of time to play at Rice Stadium, but all oh, huge implications for both these teams on the field right now on the outcome of that game in Salt Lake City. They have to have a Rice loss. Play action, Federer, the left-hander, slides it to Cahoon. Lowers the helmet, picks up extra yardage to the 39. McDonald, Ramos McDonald, number 34, the quarterback. There's a good look at Ben, the big Kahuna, as they call him. McKenzie gets a call, has a lane, he can go! He's gone. Goodbye. McKenzie at the 20. McKenzie at the 10. Touchdown. Untouched. 62 yards. The moment they lost the team on the outside, McKenzie, 5'10", 215, senior, but great speed. Broke it to the outside, and this Lobo crowd got real quiet. McKenzie, the whack. Mountain Division Player of the Week a week ago, 187 yards against Tulsa already with a carry of 62. 62 yard touchdown. New Mexico was in a blitz situation. They came up trying to play them tight the line of scrimmage. They lost containment, and that's all McKenzie needed. Potchman in to try the point after. Owen Potchman has made 22 consecutive point afters. Good snap, the kick is up, and the left footer is true. So a shootout in the whack. Buckle up. Hang on. It's 7-7 in Albuquerque. We, we thought we were going to have a low-scoring game, but might not be. We'll come back. It's the Lobos and Cougars tied at 7. No storm last night, Kellen. Are you a skier? I try. Uh, go for it. Back-to-back <laughs> <laughs> -back winning seasons since 1970-71 for the Lobos and Cougars. Incomplete, the pass went out to the tight end, Tony Hemphill. Delay, draw, around the corner. One man to beat, big contact. Dion Marion, Jason Walker. Had a uh, bounce from both sides. New Mexico looking for more from the eye. Lee sprints out, trying to get back across the green. And the catch is hold down inside the 10 yard line. Ben Cook on coverage. And the man. Pasco Vols has just dominated defenses the last four games. 30 receptions, nearly 600 yards, and the nine touchdowns. Nearly had his 10th there. First and goal inside the 10. Minnesota Vikings coordinator, uh, Brian Bellick. And what it is, it's 16 yards or more on the run, 20 yards or more on a pass. And they've already got one here on this series, and it's definitely putting them in scoring position. In games where they have six explosive plays or more, they're winning. Well, Dennis Francione wants those big plays. Has a 34-yarder and a 17-yard pass play on this drive alone. Up and over. Close, no signal. Gonna give it to him. Touchdown, New Mexico. <laughs> Option. Samuel's got a first down inside the 10 yard line. In the second half, this year Michigan has only given up one touchdown. That was last week against Penn State. Second and goal from the three. That's Hayes in motion. Maybe from McCullough. And it's... Nope. Not quite. 
Samuel Snick. They give it to him. Touchdown. He disappeared in the pile, and when they uncovered him, there he was. Touchdown, Wisconsin. McKenzie stumbles, driven back. Lost a couple back to the 32. To the top of your screen, coming up on the six-minute mark from the eye. Play action is Federick, rolls, and fires complete. A great adjustment to the ball. Billy Austin again on coverage, and Aaron Cup out of the backfield, hold down his second catch. Better since he only stands six feet. You can do that when you have a strong arm. The hold in motion. Third down, call it four, second effort. McKenzie to the 45 yard line, about a yard. Margin Hooks lines up to the far side. Dustin Johnson, the tight end. Frederick, the lefty, throws it into the flats. McKenzie driven out of bounds near the 45-yard line. Let's go to the studios and Mike. Craig and Kellen, how many times have we seen turnovers decide the outcomes of big games? Bryce's Chad Nelson fumbles the ball. It's picked up by big number 99, Mike Thomas. All 280 pounds of them rumbles inside the 10. Two plays later, Utah quarterback Darnell Arsenault will take it in himself and watch this leap. He lands on his shoulder, hurt himself, but Utah leads 31 fourths. Balls, the dangerous wideout lines up. One on one with Omar Morgan to the near side. A little option play this time. They rode the defense on occasion to keep them honest. Marion checks in. In motion, Omar Morgan follows into the far side. They throw out of the backfield. Marion with a pads are popping down to the 25, short of the first down. We're not exactly close to the field. We're kind of high up here in the press box, and we can hear the pads just like we're down on the sideline. That ends the first quarter, and what a quarter. Offensive Express. New Mexico leads Brigham Young by South Carolina. Where they are in their program and trying to turn things around. How pivotal this game is. Oh, the reverse nearly. No, they got a man. Federick hooks up. It's Aaron Cup. Touchdown. They took the bite. No flags on the play. Take the reverse. Come up, throw it deep. 60 yards. Four catches for Cup already. My. Three catches for Cup. You know what? And Kellen. Lavelle Edwards is not known as a, a trick artist uh, to, to throw the trickery, but he fakes a reverse and finds Cup wide open. A great toss by Federick. It turns out to be a misdirection. Cup, three catches, 77 yards on the day, and we've just started the second quarter. Hotchman will try the point after. He has made 23 consecutive PATs, make it 24. And the Cougars and Lobos are tied at 14. All cup. They're banging helmets. The Cougars have tied it up here in Albuquerque. 13.49 to go in the half. We'll be back. End zone. Watch the fake by the quarterback, Federick, and then the pickup by the wide receiver coming around on the fake reverse, giving Federick enough time to find Cup downfield. And that's Irwin, number 39, who lost Cup in the mayhem of all the movement going on. Pretty much alive, but things will change as this day wears on. And that's the exciting thing about what's happening in this black conference. Pascal Valls in motion, under 13 minutes ago. Lacey Greenlee just wait for the break on third down and 12 from the shotgun. Lee, the slant. First down, New Mexico, 37-yard line. Milton Thomas wide open, and Ben Cook had to chase him down. Durant and Hemphill in. Pascal Valls now bolts out and sets up to the far side. Second down, 11, going for the home run ball with Omar Morgan incomplete. We talked third down, 11. Changes things up. 
Looks near side now. Goes oh, up. What a throw. And what a catch. What a throw. Omar Morgan in on coverage of New Mexico and put that ball right into the chest of Oliver. Impressive stat there. 32 pass plays at 20 yards or more with Old down seven. Now the motion man. Complete balls out of bounds near the first down around the seven or eight yard line play coming up. It's the eyes of Omar Morgan one on one with Pascal Valls. Play action pass, Grandly, good protection, lobs it into the end zone and complete. Ball, ball, ball. Turkey 21 14, New Mexico over BYU on this touchdown pass from Graham Lee to Thomas, number 83. Craig, uncovered, uncovered. Franchione, he's got his finger up because he just heard the Utah Rice final also. That's in the back of his mind also. He said he wasn't going to be able to um, watch the scoreboard, but we caught him in a little smile when that announcement was made that Utah had beat Rice. Yeah, things really not change up. This game takes on such an important factor in how the Mountain Division will turn out. Bloom with the kick. Dabney runs underneath at the 12. Dabney. 21-14. Federick under center. Good protection. Going deep. Has a man. Little bump. Flag should come out. No. Oh, there's a late one. There's a late one. Department. Dabney is in as one of the wide receivers. They fake the reverse. Here comes McKenzie. Toward the line of scrimmage. Not necessarily to the outside. Second down and six. Cahoon in motion. McKenzie, there you he go. must have heard you right there up you the go. middle. And a first down for Brigham Young to the ball, and he has no chance. Big third down, 12 from the 47. Federick rolls, fires, has a man. Oh, what a catch, what a hit. What a play. Get to it. Federick here, they're trying to go to the wide receiver screen, coming back underneath. Well defended. Federick falls to the outside. Cut pulls it in and holds it. And they're going to go for it. Pulls it short. Danny Atuaya checks in. Number 35 along with McKenzie. Fourth down, less than a yard. McKenzie breaks the tackle first down. Brigham Young at the 33. 520 to go. First down, play action. Federick. Good protection. Looking. Got him. Fires across the middle. Cahoon at the 16. <laughs> Federick shows some emotion. Well, they call him the big Kahuna. Lines up in that tight end position. Double tight. Going for the home run ball up top. Incomplete. New side. Second down and 15. Federick. Cahoon. Near the first down. The clock will continue to run down near the seven yard line. RJ Anderson lines up near side. Federick's going to keep it on third down and one. He needed to get just to the five yard line. I believe it's going to be first down. Now just, just short of the five yard line, make a first down. And you know, look at Federick. On the can walk in. Touchdown. He was going to the outside that time. He had great speed. That's what speed will do for you. Not a chance. And New Mexico get their hands on him. Watch the lead blocked by the fullback here. Good job of tying up the defender. McKenzie, number 20, just breaks to the outside. He makes the big turn. And remember that 4.2 quarterback, so they didn't have time to run their routes. But what Kevin Federick's doing to combat that, he's scrambling around, even on the bad ankle, and so he's been able to buy the time for the receivers to complete their routes. That's what was successful on that last drive. Craig? Thanks, Ollie. 11 plays, 72 yards. Two minutes and a half. Second down, 10. On the 
option. Oh, the pitch. Marion is hammered down inside the 45 of the 42 yard. They're down seven. Over a minute to go and a half. Play action lead. Ran across the middle. Down. Nearly picked off Spencer Reed. Can you get a stop or two on defense? We're moving the ball pretty good on offense. I might be wrong, but I swear you snuck a smile after you heard the right score. <laughs> I may have, but all that matters is we got to win this one right now. Okay, thanks very much. Back to you, Craig. All right, thank you, Holly. 21 all here in Albuquerque to the studios for halftime and Mike Adamley. All right, thank you very much, Craig. Another Mountain Division game of note. Hard hitting affair between Rice and Utah early on. Watch Rice's Larry Ruffin put the hurt on Chris Fuamatu Maafala. That set the tempo for the game. Later in the first quarter, Maafala gets the screen pass from Darnell Arsenault. And the big man, 275 pounds, bangs into the end zone. Utah up early, 10-0. Early in the second half, turnover's a problem for Rice today. Chad Nelson, he throws the pitch. The ball is fumbled, is picked up by Charles Lawson. He goes on the distance there for the touchdown. Utah goes on to win it to run their conference record of 4-3, the final 31-14. Two yards out. Takes it in by himself. They made the extra point. It was 26-21. Now 2.15 left. West again, his second touchdown in four minutes to put the Panthers on top, 27-21. 32 seconds left. Donovan McMahon, oh, he finds Quentin Spotwood in the end zone. Touchdown. The Orangemen survive a huge scare. Win it 32-20. Uh, you know, fumble we had on the kickoff, but uh, other than that, it's heck of a ball game. You wanted to run the ball to win today. Brian McKenzie already 95 yards. Well, we're doing what we wanted to do, and we just got now stop him. You know, we gave him a, an easy touchdown there at the end when we didn't get lined up properly. But, it's, uh, you know, hey, we're hanging in there playing well. Okay, you heard the right score, right? Yes. Utah oh, beat him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Craig, back to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Holly. Always gets a, always has a way of getting that in there. Yeah, so obviously a huge game here. We're tied at 20, 45 yard line. The pitch turns it up, tripped up after he crossed midfield. Lee, great play. And Pascal Vols makes the move to the 32 yard line. Yeah, the sprint up goes the other way. Pascal Vols again. Oh, he went up in traffic. I guarantee you he heard Ben Cook. Near sideline. Lee on the sprint out. Turns the corner. All of a sudden, New Mexico going with the option. Johnson, the lone back. Lee again on the option. Through the seam. Touchdown, New Mexico. They saw something at halftime. They went in and said, we see this. We're going to come out. We think we can move the ball in this. Snowing. High winds tonight. Calm but cold. Jason Bloom has it teed up at the 35-yard line. Dabney and Horton back to receive the kick for Brigham Young. It's 28-21, New Mexico. There's a wide out. Federick on the run. So he is an amazing player. What type of turf are you going to get? And his ankle just slipped from under him a little bit. Dabney, the scat back. He can play wide out. They line him up, and he runs it to the 20. Goes third quarter. McKenzie were able to stop. Took his way to the end zone. Final play of this quarter. Federick, timing pattern into the end zone. Touchdown, Brigham Young. It was hauled down by Margin Hooks. Yes, he did. The red shirt freshman from Waco. The coverage looked good. The ball was coming in. He had a chance to make a play. Number 34, Ramos McDonald. And he just like he just stopped on the play. Let's take a look at the top of your screen. The bump and run. He thinks he got him to the outside. I don't, I don't know if he lost the ball or not. We'll take, take another look at it. Look, up close look. A good bump on him. He's right there with him. He lost sight of the ball. I didn't realize the ball was in the air. That's what a time route will do to a defensive back. We are tied at 28. Federick with a great touch. Throws it to the red shirt freshman. Margin Hooks, his second touchdown reception of the season. And that forces a 28 all tie here in Albuquerque. We'll come back after number 14 minutes ago. Third down 11. Brandley over the middle. 
to his fullback and complete. That brings up a punting situation for the low first downs. Even. Rushing yards, even. He wants the Cougars to pay for it. Lee on the run. Lee still on his feet and is taken down with one arm by Brad Martin. Now that is strength, folks. look at one another before they would signal the touchdown. Milton Thomas with his second touchdown of the game. Of the year. Milton Thomas. Point after. The shootout continues. Oh, so much time though remains in Albuquerque. 12.40 to go. New Mexico leads now. Brigham Young, 35-28. Graham Lee, great touch pass. Milton Thomas hangs it in, and oh yes, touchdown. We'll be back the shotgun. Lee runs, then pitches. And into the pile goes the fullback. And Cahoon, line up near side now. Cahoon, the motion man. Oh, McKenzie, did you see that? He, he started to the inside, cut it back out, and there was no gain. Absolutely nothing. He picks up margin hooks. saying, hey, get out there, I'll throw it to you. Has a man off the fingertips, incomplete. The head coach is up on the bench. This is the culmination of what he's been trying to build here in New Mexico. He realizes that the road to the WAC championship goes to BYU. How important is this game in the sack? Federick goes down. Scott. would not be a factor for him tonight. Three wideouts. They throw the slant. Nope, incomplete. Milton Thomas. Little line drive kick. Takes us a bounce. Oh, we're going to mark it at the one at foot the one line. Yard line. Oh, In yards. They have a chance at overtime. McKenzie has pushed back maybe a foot or two on that. And off McKenzie. Breaks it to the six. Here. Well, we mentioned you have the two timeouts. Now you have to start thinking, you're going to run or pass, you've got to go sideline to stop the clock. Federick pedals back. Still in, has time in the back of the end zone. Throws deep, cut, incomplete at the 30. Oh, so close. That brings up fourth, fourth quarter. Fake Great pitch. Play. He's got a lane. He could go hands on with a tackler into the no, the one yard the line. One yard line. Oh, what a run by Graham Lee. Tyler Nelson <laughs> made the touchdown saving <laughs> tackle. The lead did something so athletic down near the 15. He came down in the conference. New Mexico, St. Louis, BYU. The fullback. Up the middle, the clock will run. Under two minutes, 24 carries, 133 yards. Third line, third down and goal. Shelton to the two. BYU cannot stop the clock. You right now is a block field goal. Colby Kaysen, this will be a 20-yarder. The kick is true, and up. There's the nail in the coffin. 28-28. New Mexico has finally broken through. BYU king of the whack. The Lobos say it's time for a change. September 1980. Jim McMahon, quarterback. Other side, Brigham Young dejected. Of everything he's tried to do here at New Mexico and everywhere else he's been. Well, he rebuilt Pittsburgh State, his alma mater. He comes here to New Mexico and six years later. 
picks up the biggest win of his career against Brigham Young. Federick on the final play across to Cahoon. Tackle down at the 45, and that's it. 38-28, New Mexico. ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. That would lead to this five-yard touchdown pass to Chris Jackson. Washington State up 20-14. to Early in the fourth, Stanford's down six. Troy Walters catches the punt. See you later. 77 yards for the touchdown. That would put Stanford up 28-27, to and here we go. Cougars not finished. Michael Black plows his way into the end zone for the four-yard touchdown. Washington State would score again in the quarter, and they go on to win by 10, 38-28. So Washington State keeps their Rose Bowl hopes alive. 43-06 on hand to watch. Largest crowd in Martin Stadium history. And they Tennessee almost threw a wrench in the SEC East hunt. The Volunteers edged out Arkansas in a tight one, 30-22. Peyton Manning hit Marcus Nash on a 49-yard pass to put Tennessee up for good. 16th ranked Auburn took care of business in Athens with an impressive 45-34 win over 7th ranked Georgia. The Tigers are still in the hunt for the SEC West. Meanwhile, the Bulldogs are likely out of the East. Top ranked Michigan remained undefeated and knocked Wisconsin out of Rose Bowl contention with a 26-16 win. Chris Howard ran for 90 yards in two scores. Fourth ranked Ohio State thumped Illinois 41-6. The Buckeyes will look to grab a share of the Big Ten title with a win over Michigan next week in Ann Arbor. Michael Martin scored two touchdowns and rushed for 158 yards to lead 15th-ranked Arizona State past Oregon 52-31. The Sun Devils are still alive for a trip back to the Rose Bowl. 18th-ranked Texas A&M captured a spot in the Big 12 title game with a 51-7 victory over Oklahoma. Dante Hall earned 139 yards on the ground and three TDs. Number two, Florida State extended its NCAA record of 10 or more wins in 11 straight seasons. The Seminoles beat Wake Forest Saturday 58-7. Thad Busby threw four touchdowns. Nebraska won. Penn State came back from last week's loss to beat Purdue. North Carolina held off Clemson. Skip Hicks scored four times for UCLA. Kansas State came out on top. Notre Dame has won three in a row. Florida top Carolina. Washington State beat Stanford. For the first time in school history, Alabama did not win at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Syracuse squeaked past Pittsburgh. Northwestern beat Iowa. Texas Tech upset Oklahoma State. And Missouri is headed to a bowl game for the first. Who shut out in 40 years and it didn't get much better against Mississippi State. They thought I had them pinned back in their own territory. Instead, James Johnson goes 83 yards. Mississippi State up 32-20. Jackie Sherrill also got a contract extension. Colorado, Kansas State. Colorado down 13-6. Ben Kelly will fumble the kickoff. Jared Cooper recovers. Kansas State took advantage. Michael Bishop, Justin Swift. Swift is not only big, he is swift. A little skirt in there. The first one against Colorado in 13 meetings, 37-20. Number 18, Texas A&M against Oklahoma. The Aggies are already up 37-0 and no mercy. Dante, all the little guy, scampers 60 yards. He had three touchdowns in the game, 51-7. Stick him with a big 12. Texas Tech against number 21, Oklahoma State. Tony Lindsay will drop back to pass for the orange-clad Cowboys. Tipped by Jason Freeman. Intercepted by Tar Ordwan. 50 yards, covers half the field the other way. Texas Tech wins it, holding Oklahoma State to just a field goal. They can win the Big 12 South outright if they beat Oklahoma next week. Baylor and Missouri. Jeff Watson scrambling his pass to Morris Anderson. His tip up and intercepted by Harold Piercy. And look at the way he was tipped up. Now that's how the Nebraska tied Missouri and sent it to overtime where they won last week. Missouri benefits from the same kind of play. They score a touchdown in the turnover. Baylor already down 28 to 10 and a twirly bird pass by Odell James. Justin Wyatt is there. And this is why everyone runs wind sprints. I don't care if you're a tailback, a kicker, or a defensive lineman. It pays. 42-24 Missouri recovers from that heartbreaking line. And has missed little if any time as a result. Had to change some of the fundamentals about his game, but he is in there regardless. Dick and hit as he fires for Sutherland. Hopes to move up, but there are still good possibilities for an Alliance Bowl bid for the Big Ten. Michigan, Ohio State, or Penn State. This one, Daniels hangs on to. He dropped one earlier at his two. This one, he brings back all the way. As the quarterback goes, so goes the offense, quoting Coach Joe Tiller for Purdue. When the quarterback throws the ball to the right place, the offense is virtually unstoppable. 
but there's enormous pressure on a Billy Dickin in a situation like Long time indeed. 1984, their last winning siege bowl. Last postseason action for Purdue. Jim Everett, three touchdown passes, and they led Virginia 24-14. Don Mikowski, a sneak to cut it to 24-21. Cavaliers, a delay of game call so they could get a better angle for the winning kick, and George Welsh's Cavaliers defeated Leon Burton at Spoilers 27-24. I was there. were there. I was there. I was the... Ended all last season. Lightning quick led the way with 19. Despite their terrible record last year, the Blue Demons with a 53-game winning streak on the line at Alumni Hall. Thomas Cooper, the steal, the slam, the pull-up, 29-13 at the half. Watts leads the way with 19. Willie Coleman had a dozen. Ayindi Avery, eight. And Pat Kennedy's a winner in his DePaul debut, 58-34 to the final. Some will end up terming it a little ugly, I guess. Um, when you really try to just play a half-court game and really, really control the tempo, sometimes it can look that way. But at the same time, I think for this group of young men and for us to kind of compensate for our inches, our style of play is going to serve us very well. It feels great to be out there again after a year off uh, and watching the team play last year. It kind of hurt. But to be out there again, uh, it feels great. At the beginning of the game, I had tears coming out of my eyes just for the joy of uh, being, being able to play again. Nimbley Hall, first time in 23 years the in-state schools have met on the hardwood. Jerry Hester, back from that back injury, missed last season. He hits the three. Avi Story, the former Proviso West star. He's now playing for the Illini. He hits from the top of the key. 36-26 Illinois at the half. Second half, Rob Dye bombing away for Molinari's Bradley Braves. Six threes in the game. He had a game-high 23. Pulls him within six, but Hester would seal the deal in this one late with a monster slam dunk and the Illini win it by 10, 69 to 59. Valparaiso, the favorite to win the Midcon Conference, taking on Purdue Monday night. Valpo, without leading score, Bryce Drew out till mid-December with a strained knee. The Boilermakers getting a big first half from sophomore Brian Cardinal, bombing away 16 of his 20 in the first half. Crusaders trouble hanging on to the ball without Bryce Drew. Allen Eldridge, the steal, the slam. Purdue up 34-21 at the half. Midway through the second half, though, Valpo would make a run. Jason Jenkins and Bill Jenkins leading the charge, and the layup would cut Purdue's lead to eight points. But the Boilermakers would pull away. Gary McQuay sealing it with a slam and a foul, and Purdue 